So the next set of sessions with Limra and myself in the Skated Bridalist Start were just really exciting on many different fronts. There was a lot of progress made in respects to introducing new concepts such as the backup and also adding more speed and energy into our liberty circles and following at the shoulder. And there was also progress made in respects to the refinement of the already existing exercises that we were practicing. Perhaps the most exciting moment, however, was this session that I'm featuring here, in which Limra stayed connected and didn't leave once during the entire session. And this was the first session where that was the case, where she chose to stay with me uh, throughout the entirety of that session and that was in spite of a couple different things. First of all, it was a super windy day. Many horses are more nervous and sensitive when there's a lot of wind and so I was surprised that in spite of those conditions she was so willing to stay with me. And we also did introduce multiple new elements into her training during this session. So I thought that was just really neat that in spite of those more challenging both situations and uh, exercises, we were able to stay so connected. One concept that we continued to refine was moving my feet less. So attempting to simply pivot as she circled me and only stepping back as I show here when absolutely necessary to maintain the circle and maintain the draw. And she did an excellent job of that. I started to be able to correct her bend with my whips and keep her on a tight circle around me without having to adjust my feet as much. I also began to work on a figure eight pattern. You can see that here, where I'm circling to the left here, and I keep her on that left circle, and then I draw her straight for a moment and then circle around to the right and start to create that more true figure eight pattern. So this is all about refining directional control and really being able to tell her where I want her feet to be and how she should be aligned on different circles. In session number eight, I decided to introduce adding more speed and energy through an exercise called hurry up and come to me or hurry up and come to the shoulder. You can see I started moving alongside the edge of the round pen and increasing my energy and running backwards and then stopping and rewarding her when she starts to get closer to my shoulder or catch that shoulder. So the idea is she learns to kind of hurry up and find my shoulder. I often start on a circle like this and then start uh, creating energy with my whip and drawing backwards with my feet and then the instant she offers me more energy and effort towards my shoulder, then I release my energy down. And I wasn't sure how this was going to go totally at liberty. This is often an exercise that we actually start online with the rope halter and a rope. And I was very excited, just absolutely thrilled at how quickly she started to pick up this, oh, I get to chase my human concept. Uh, and, and you can see here, this was our first time introducing this and she wasn't scared of the whips. She did turn and leave me once here going to the left. So you see here I'm circling to the left and I try the add, try to add the energy and she turns away. And I just ran and cut her off and sent her back around. Um, and then went back to my circle and tried to attempt to add that energy again here. And she actually just kind of came to my shoulder like there. She did a couple steps of told actually and then came to my shoulder and I stopped and rubbed on her and it was no big deal. Uh, so really very smooth process of introducing this increase in energy and speed. Uh, and I think that's much credit to this mare's character. Uh, and also the fact that she's just really starting to learn to follow my energy and not be at all worried about my tools. So she's starting to get very brave to the whips in these sessions and understanding that the whips can add energy and that doesn't mean run away. 
So in session number nine, I was able to take this same exercise off the rail of the round pen and into the center. So I wasn't using the wall of the round pen anymore to help her funnel towards my shoulder. And she actually picked that up very quickly. Once again, just absolutely thrilled with that. You can see here she's doing a blend of tolt and trot on that circle. Uh, and then I'm able to draw her to my shoulder. She had a lot easier time going around me on that left circle than here to the right. Here to the right, she was really falling in on that right shoulder um, and wanting to put me almost in the left eye. You can see she's blending more canter into her gait there. And this is just an imbalance, a crookedness that she's struggling with. And I was still really happy that she took my corrections on her right shoulder with my carriage whip and didn't leave, still showed a lot of draw towards me. In these sessions, I also introduced the attunement exercise of matching steps. When you're matching steps, you're simply mirroring what the horse is doing with their front feet with your feet. So when she takes a step with her left foot, I take a step forward with my left foot and vice versa with the right. Here I'm doing it with her traveling at my left shoulder and here I'm doing the same exercise with her following along at my right shoulder. This exercise is great for showing our horses that we see them uh, and being seen is an important part of any relationship and so I feel like this exercise really helps us connect with our horses in a way that really shows them that we notice their feelings and are paying attention to how they're moving. Uh, here I'm doing this exercise and actually interweaving it into a sequence of multiple different maneuvers. So there I was matching steps, then I switched directions, I'm circling her around me to the right, then I have her follow all the way and come to my left shoulder. So you can see I just transition her to the following at the shoulder position from the circle. And then I start matching steps again in the new direction. So it can be a great way to um, layer an attunement element over other exercises. And you can see here I turn away and after building that connection with the matching steps and following at the shoulder, I actually bring that into this hurry up and come to me exercise where I'm getting her to bring more energy towards my shoulder. So it's really fun to braid things together in that way. Additionally, I used this when I started to introduce following at the shoulder with more energy. So here I'm working on little transitions where I bring my energy up and run forward a couple steps with her staying at my shoulder and then bring my energy down to reward her following. This was another new exercise that we introduced during these couple of sessions. Something that we began to play with was circle size control. So being able to push her out onto a larger circle, as I'm doing here where I'm raising up my hand that has the carriage whip, I'm walking towards her shoulder and really pushing her and holding her out with both whips uh, to achieve a larger circle and then lowering my whips as I'm doing here and drawing her into that more pivoting in place circle. Playing around with varying that distance control and circle size was something that I introduced in these sessions. And along with that, I also began to really ask her to figure out how to orient herself to the whip cues, um, especially in changes of direction and in respects to different circle sizes. So here, for example, I push her out. I actually lose her a little bit for a second. She drifts off to nibble on some hay scraps. Um, but then I draw her back in and I go to push her back out onto a bigger circle and then decide that some changes of direction would help get her thinking more and stay more connected. So I start doing these front switches and I am moving my feet, but I'm really asking her to maintain a connection 
while still really pushing her shoulders around more with my whips. You see there in that directional change, I'm really pushing her shoulders out and away from me, which is new because in the beginning, we're working so hard on the draw, we can't push the horse away from us in that same way. Um, and you can really see it here. You see I'm holding my whips out and really waiting for her to reorient and shift back on her hind legs and move her shoulders around. Um, as opposed to me backing up and making it easier for her to figure out that directional switch. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there's a lot of new concepts that we introduced in these sessions, and one of those was backing up. So here I just put her along the wall in the following at the shoulder position, and then just started to create energy with my whip in front of her by waving it. And if she took a step back, I just brought that energy down and released that whip away. And it's just really neat how quickly she picked up on these things. Generally, these are all things that we start with a halter and lead rope on. And it was cool that she stayed with me. And it seems in this process, she's becoming so tuned into just energy and releasing away from energy in a variety of different ways that she's actually picking up on concepts even more quickly than a lot of horses normally would in training because that energy conversation is how everything is being developed. So that's been a really neat thing to experience as a trainer and definitely food for thought. And the final exercise that we introduced was some basic whip desensitization, just stroking her over her body with the whips and trying to get her even more calm and confident with them as tools. So stay tuned folks for more videos and if you're interested in viewing complete sessions, so unedited complete sessions, just sign up for the Bridalist Start membership. You can do that at talkter.horse. Music